let's take a look at another info leak in QEMU. So as we said before, QEMU supports both emulation and virtualization, and we have something here that we've seen previously in the class. Open Host Controller Interface, or OHCI, was an early USB mechanism for defining the interactions between hardware and software. And like the past example where we had seen OHCI used in the context of the VirtualBox emulation system, QMU virtualizes or emulates a OHCI controller, but of course it should always treat the stuff coming from a guest VM as fully acid. So again, the scope of the OHCI spec was saying, okay, there's going to be some sort of software driver that interacts with some sort of hardware host controller. So it was telling the hardware makers your host controller should behave a certain way and the software driver makers your driver should interact with that hardware in a certain way. So in a normal non-virtualized system, you would have an app that wants USB data, you'd have an operating system kernel, and the host controller driver, this software, would be running up in kernel space typically. Then you would have the hardware host controller out somewhere in the CPU or platform controller hub or a system on a chip. And of course, the kernel should treat that as untrustworthy. And then you've got a USB device, which of course is extra untrustworthy. It's just some random thing coming into the system, sending whatever it wants. And as long as it can convince the host controller that its packets are okay, then the acid sent by the USB device will be sent through to the host controller driver. And there can always be bugs in kernel drivers that would lead to kernel compromise. So in the context of a virtualized system, we've got the OS kernel, we've got the QMU application running in user space. Maybe if it's running on something like Linux, it might use the KVM kernel driver in order to uh, perform full virtualization. But QMU, the application, is sort of virtualizing a full operating system. And that, of course, should be treated as untrustworthy. And the operating system will have its own user space kernel space separation. And we are always concerned with the situation where an attacker has an application that's dropped into the virtual machine. That application sends acid to the kernel compromises the kernel and then the kernel can now have its host controller driver which is just the same sort of kernel driver you would have on a normal windows or linux operating system but that compromised driver can send acid to the virtual host controller hardware that qmu is emulating by just having a software implementation rather than a true hardware implementation and that can lead to compromise of qmu and subsequently the attacker has escaped the vm and from there, of course, they will want to do things like privilege escalate and take over the full host operating system. Now, the additional OHCI context or USB context really is that there's the notion of endpoint descriptors and transfer descriptors, and they're arranged in data structures, something like this. So the host controller driver assigns an endpoint descriptor for each endpoint in the system. The endpoint descriptor contains the information necessary for the host controller to communicate with the endpoint. So endpoints would be, for instance, that USB device that you had plugged in. Transfer descriptors then contain the information necessary to describe the data packets to be transferred. So this is going to be the core ACID that's being pulled in, whereas the endpoint descriptor, some of it might be ACID, but it's mostly uh, just sort of a reference to what kind of device the system is interacting with. So specifically for this vulnerability, the extra background is that you're going to be looking at isochronous transfer descriptors. So isochronous means constant time, and it's a particular mode of USB where packets are guaranteed to have a certain bandwidth available to them. And so this data structure right here corresponds to one that you're going to see in the code. And this is the description of all those fields. Some of the most important fields are this buffer page zero and buffer end. So it says the buffer page zero is the physical address number of the first byte of the data buffer used by this isochronous transfer descriptor. The buffer end is the last byte of the buffer. Next TD is just a pointer to the next uh, transfer descriptor we saw on the previous slide. These are sort of arranged in a linked list. And then there's a bunch of offsets. You can see we have eight offsets here. And those offsets are used to determine the size and starting address of an isochronous data packet. There's also things like the starting frame and the frame count. The frame count is basically saying how many of these offsets are used. And the starting frame is saying, you know, which of those should actually be used uh, for the the first offset to the first bit of data that is supposed to be analyzed or pulled in at this point. Okay, so in the code, you're going to be looking at this OHCI service, service ISO TD, and specifically this ISO TD data structure is 
uh, corresponds to this definition right here. So right here, this OHCI read ISO TD is reading in the isochronous transfer descriptor from the guest operating system driver, uh, OHCI driver. So the potentially fully compromised guest operating system says, hey, here you go, here's one of these data structures for you. And then QMU reads that in and operates on it. So go ahead and take a look at this under the assumption that it, that is ACID and see if you can spot the information leak here.